our country just elected the first openly transgender member of the House, and she was amazing. She came here and sat with us. Yeah. Yeah. Democratic Congresswoman Sarah McBride, and she's already being targeted by GOP Representative Nancy Mace, who introduced a bill backed by House Speaker Johnson that bans trans women from using women's facilities at the Capitol. And I, I have to point out that this is not about an issue. Uh, Nancy Mace has tweeted 326 times <laughs> within 72 Goodness hours. This is a trolling bully, just to be clear. There's Absolutely. really no two sides to that part. Um, but why do you think Mace is picking this fight? And do you have any recourse to stop it? Well, Nancy Mace clearly needs an intervention <laughs> in terms of <laughs> the fact that she's chosen this fight at this moment uh, when there are so many issues that the American people want us to work together on, deal with, to improve their lives and deliver real results. Now, Representative-elect McBride has handled this with grace. Oh, she's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, and strength and perspective. Yeah. She said to all of us uh, that she came to the Congress to fight for the people of Delaware, yeah. not to fight about bathrooms. Yeah. And she's you know, going to proceed, I think, be an incredibly effective member of Congress, work on the issues that she was elected to work on, uh, as the incoming member for an entire state, which is the case when you represent Delaware. At the same period of time, we're going to make clear that Representative McBride will be treated with dignity and respect. Yes. Can I just oh, point out, every congressperson has a bathroom in their, every congressperson has a bathroom in their office, so she's got a bathroom she can use in her office, and I'm sure she can use your bathroom in the bathroom of every Democrat and every person who's not a bigot in the United States Congress. We That's have bathrooms here. In this building, it just says all genders. Yeah. Why can't they just do that everywhere? Yeah, well, there, are, there, are, yeah. there are all gender bathrooms yeah. in many of the Capitol office buildings, uh, not necessarily in the Capitol itself, oh. uh, but we're going to work through that Renovate. Issue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this, Congressman. Um, in the past, you've called Donald Trump a clear and present danger. Uh, and the Grand Wizard of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Oh. That's one that I really enjoyed. Um, you served as an impeachment manager in his first trial, and, and, and you really have been sounding alarms about a second Trump term. Now that he is headed back to the Oval Office, what is your biggest concern? Because we'll have people like Pete Hedgeth and RFK Jr. with his brain worm in his cabinet, if confirmed. <laughs> Well, the incoming president on the campaign trail promised the best economy, mm -hmm. the best border security, and the best administration. Yeah. But then we've seen picks like the nominee for the Secretary of Defense, mm -hmm. the former nominee for the Department of Justice, mm -hmm. the current nominee uh, for the Department of Health and Human Services, clearly not qualified, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., mm -hmm. to serve in that position to protect the health, the safety, and the well-being of the American people. So our view is... Is this the best that America can do? Clearly, it is not. Right. Mm -hmm. We can do better. And we're going to hold the former president on his way into a second term to the things and the promises that he made on the campaign trail to work with us to deliver the very best for America. But out of the gate, some of these nominations clearly fall short. So, mm -hmm. Another uh, question that I think Americans are asking yes. themselves. There's, we were talking about this. There's a lot of people who are incredibly disillusioned and just want to tune out for the next four years. Mm. There's a lot of people not watching the news. They just don't want to know. <laughs> they don't want to know. People who put their hearts and souls into it. You can't win in two years if these people stay uh, in bed and tuned out. What is your message to those folks that are just mm. devastated right now? I learned growing up, uh, in Brooklyn and going to the Cornerstone Baptist Church and coming of age during a tough time uh, in central Brooklyn, that a knockdown is different than a knockout. Mm -hmm. And that the American people have been resilient on our 248-year journey. Mm -hmm. We've been through storms before. Mm -hmm. We're heading into a storm. In every other storm, we come out stronger on the other side. Yeah. I hope you're right. House Democrats will always put American values over autocracy. Benevolence over bigotry. The Constitution over the cult. Democracy over demagogues. Knowledge over kangaroo courts. Liberty over limitation. Maturity over Mar-a-Lago. That was good. We're back with Rita Hakeem Jeffries.
So that was a clip from your first uh, floor speech after taking the helm as minority leader back in 2023. Now it has inspired your new book, illustrated for children and adults of all ages, called The ABCs of Democracy. Yeah. It's very good. It's just like, very much like this speech. Have you sent Donald Trump a copy? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning to? Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll engage with him once he takes office on January 20th. But, you know, I think the speech in the book was really designed just to lay out uh, through initially the lens of the alphabet, right, which I hoped was easily accessible to the American people, mm -hmm. and now using the power of illustration on top of it, yeah. Uh, to make clear that we've been on a journey for 248 years. Presidents come, presidents go. There are elections that we embrace, elections that we're disappointed by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are values and ideas and institutions uh, that have yeah. kept us and made us the greatest democracy in the history of the world. And we've got to lean into those values and ideas as we move forward through the next few years. Well, right now... Um... Tensions are clearly high in this country. Um, and as you said, as the votes come in, the, the election was close. This is a divided country. But it, uh, it tends to push us all to our silos. And we assume the worst about specifically Trump voters. Um, and we write them off entirely. Is it time for a new approach? Or how do we move forward without that defining people by who they voted for? Yeah, we've got to find the common ground. And everybody, I think, wants to live in a safe neighborhood, have access to a good paying job, be able to pay their bills, not have to make decisions about whether you put food on the table or clothing on the back or how can I pay the rent or pay off the mortgage. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are things that unite every American across the country, whether you're in urban America, rural America, mm -hmm. small town America, suburban America, the heartland of America. So we do have to look for the things that unite us. And to those that have been disappointed uh, by the results, I remember being disappointed uh, in 2024. I was just a young lawyer. No, no, not, not 2024. 2024. 2024. 2024 is what we are disappointed right. in that's now. Right. <laughs> that was a slip. Right. That was called a Freudian slip. 2004. 2004. That was a Freudian slip. That was. Uh, but, uh, and I supported John Kerry at the time. Uh huh. And thought that, you know, George W. Bush failed war in Afghanistan, failed war in Iraq. You know, policies that seem to favor the wealthy and the well-off and millionaires and billionaires. How could he be reelected? What does this say about America? Uh, but on that same day that George W. Bush, now a pretty conventional, traditional Republican, yeah. uh, was reelected, Barack Obama right. uh, was elected. Two years later, Democrats took back control of the House and the Senate. Two years after that, in 2008, Barack Obama becomes the president. And I remember seeing a headline from a newspaper in Western Europe saying, America does it again. Yeah. And in two years, in four years, if we continue to lean in with the resilience that we've always shown, I think we can hope for brighter days and America does it again. I think we will. I like that. I think we will. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming thank you. by. Thank you. His new book, The ABCs of Democracy, is available now. You can scan the QR code on our screen to purchase a copy. And members of our audience are all taking them home.